الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أيواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون My brothers in Islam, this topic is about uh, the true concept of talaq or divorce in Islam. Because there are many misconceptions in the Muslim societies how to give divorce if you want to give divorce. What are the steps to be taken before someone div divorces his wife? That is not a very simple thing. You have married a woman and uh, you have been living, in, living with her for quite a long time. So the bond which has been made between two of you, with two witnesses, with ijab and kubul, with uh, the wali of the bride, that type of bond can't be terminated except with a similar type of uh, regulations and procedure. So we have to follow that procedure if you want to make it valid. The misconception, the, the, the biggest one is go to any Muslim country, to any Muslim society and ask any person what is the way to divorce and he would say, say it three times. Just say it three times. And uh, this is how the divorce is done and later people who want to reconcile, they are told that as long as you have given three times divorce, then there is no way to reconcile at all. So this is why I want to explain these misconceptions about the talaq itself. First thing is the bond of the marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, the ayah which I have just read to you, the ayah of Surah Al-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَادٍ لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا This is among the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has created out of you spouses with whom you got peace and tranquility. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا And He has made love and affection among you. There are ayat, there are signs for those people who think and ponder deep. Of course, in each and every house you will find some type of uh, disputes, misunderstanding between the husband and the wife. At that time, what the Prophet said, لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمنة إن رضي منها إن كره منها قلقا رضي منها آخر a believer man should not despise a believing woman because if he is not pleased with one of her character, he might be pleased with some other character of her. For example, if, uh, and if you don't like the way she talks, you know, and she is sharp uh, in her talk, and this is why you are not happy with her, think about anything, any good quality in her. She might be cooking very, very well, uh, and you are pleased with her cooking, with her biryani, with her uh, all types of food. So, give advantage to that character. That is what the Prophet has said. All right, if a person is uh, totally bent to separate himself from her, then before that there is this step, the step of mediation, arbitration, which is known in Arabic as a tahkim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبْعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيبَا إِسْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا And if you fear a dispute among two of them, then send for an arbiter from his side 
an arbiter from her side, let them do mediation. So if this mediation works, becomes successful, then this is the objective you wanted to do. But if it is not successful, then the other ayah, the same surah, surah to Nisa, وَيَتَفَرَّقَ يُغْنِ اللَّهُ كُلًّا مِنْ سَعَتِهِ وَكَانُ اللَّهُ وَاسِعًا حَكِيمًا And if they separate, then Allah SWT will give each of them out of his expansion. And Allah SWT got expansion and he is wise. And again, this ayah, وَعَشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ فَإِنْ كَرَهْتُ بُهُنَّ فَعَصَى أَنْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَيَدَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Live with them in a nice way. But if you despise them, فَعَصَى أَنْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا It may be that you despise something. وَيَدَرُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And Allah SWT make a lot of khair into it. These are the steps before someone goes for talaq. But if he is... Uh, and if he has uh, made up his mind to, to divorce, then what is the way of divorce? The way of divorce is explained in Surah Al-Talaq. Go and read Surah Al-Talaq. And this Surah clearly says right from the beginning, Ya ayyuhun nabiyu idha talaqtumun nisa fa talliquhunna li'iddatihin wa ahsul iddata wa attaqullaha rabbakum لا تقيدوهن من بيوتهن إلا أن يأتين بفاحشة مبينة O Prophet This is addressed to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم But this is not only for the Prophet This is for the whole Ummah This is why just after Ya Ayyu al-Nabi Then it is an address for all For all the Muslims إذا تلقتم إذا تلقتم النساء If when you Divorce your woman, فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ Then, divorce them, لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ Such type of a divorce, after which عِدَّة can start. So it means that this divorce should come in the beginning of uh, the عِدَّة period, means that, that period of the woman in which she is uh, pure, in which she is not menstruating, give her talaq in that period. فَطَلِّقُوهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ Why? Because later I have the next uh, verses وَأَحْسُ الْعِدَّةَ And count, count the عِدَّة وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ And I have fear the Allah, fear, the, uh, fear of Allah SWT with your Rabb. وَأَحْسُ الْعِدَّةَ Count the عِدَّة As we know that uh, the idda is three monthly cycles of a woman if she is on her menses. And if she is, if she is not on her menses because of old age or because of young age, then salasatu ashkurin, three months, three lunar months, which are about uh, 90 days or less than 90 days. But uh, if she got menses, then it should be three menses. And at the end of the third menses, you are going to, she is going to end the Idda period. Why Allah SWT is saying, Wa ahsul iddata, count it, count it, see when it is going to come to an end. The reason is that in Idda, in Idda, you got uh, some rights to give her. Are you, in other words, you can say that she got some rights upon you, the one who is divorcing. What are the rights? You have to maintain her. What are the other rights? You have to give her residence. Sukna and Nafaka. Maintenance and the residence. Both. In, uh, in, of course, that is in the first revocable talaq and in the second revocable talaq. These two things are to be provided to the woman. And the third thing is that uh, during Idda period, you are allowed to take her back. And we must understand that this type of permission is given only in first talaq and the second talaq. In Surah Al-Baqarah, At-talaqu marratani, 
الطلاق مرتان فإمساك بالمعروف أو تصريح بإحسان In Jahiliya people used to give uh, يعني they used to have some sharia so they used to give talaq and after each talaq they revoke the talaq, they revoke the divorce take the woman back now they used to do it many times first talaq, revoke it second talaq, revoke it third talaq, revoke it fourth talaq, revoke it so the woman is going to suffer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a regulation here no, if you want to revoke it only twice الطلاق مرة ثانية فإمساك بالمعروف أو تصريح بإحسان. So in these two talaq, يعني whether you have done it once or you have done it a second time as well, فإمساك بالمعروف you have to retain her with you بالمعروف in a nice way أو تصريح بإحسان or let her go in إحسان in a nice way as well. So it means عِدَّة got this purpose that we have to count the days because you are allowed to take her back within the period. So if the period comes to an end, you can't take her back. She is, uh, she is divorced or the divorce becomes binding. So that is the reason. And the second reason is that in the period, can she remarry someone? No, she is not divorced yet. So she can't remarry any other person at all. So the main thing is that you have to find out uh, when this idda is going to come to an end. Sunnah, in the Sunnah of the Prophet some more regulations are given that if you have to divorce a woman, divorce her in her clean period. Not in that period in which she is menstruating. This is very important because uh, later you will come to know that some people say no, if you, you have to give three talaq, three divorces. So you have given once, and after her first menses comes, give her second. After the second menses come, give her third. In this way, you have to exhaust all three divorces in her idda period. This is not the right way of, uh, of talaq. This is not the sunnah way of talaq. Because idda period is only valid for one thing, and that is, if you want to take her back, take her back. You can't give her a second talaq in idda. No. People here, they give second talaq, third talaq, and then they say, oh, I have exhausted all three talaq, so she is haram upon me forever. No, this is, uh, this is wrong. If you got a thread, nobody got a thread here, huh? If you got a thread, thread, you can say this is a bond of the marriage. Once you cut it, hmm, it is cut now. It is cut. <coughs> so once we have said, I divorce you, or anti tariqun, then the thread has been cut. You don't need to cut it again and again. It has already been cut. <laughs> the only thing is that if you revoke this talaq, then you are going to stitch it together. This is what it means. A ruju. A ruju is stitching it together. But once it is, it is done, it is done. One talaq is enough. This is a wrong concept that you must have to give the second talaq and third talaq, then it will become binding. No, talaq is only one. Ya ayyul nabi yudha farraqtumun nisa fatallikuhunna li'iddati hir. And then, faiza balagna ajalahunna faamsikuhunna bima'roofin au fariquhunna bima'roof. In the ayah of Surah Al-Talaq, when they are about to reach their idda, the end of idda, then before idda, either farm sekuhunna bi maruf will take them back, or fari kuhunna bi maruf, or let them go. Fira, fira means separate, or separate from them, but in a nice way. So the first thing which we have established. That idda period is only good for one thing, and that is rujur, taking her back. If you don't take her back, 
Then after one talaq, she is free from the bond of the marriage at the end of Idda period. Can you remarry her? Can you remarry her? Yes. Suppose you come to terms with her after these three months are over, after three months, after six months, after one year, can you remarry her? Yes. That is another advantage of one talaq that you can remarry the very same woman. Now suppose you divorce a woman, you did not took her back, you did not take her back, and then later you remarried her. Now she is your wife. How many talaq you got now in your in your control? You have already exhausted one. So you got only two talaq left. Suppose, because you are a very angry person, you divorced her second time as well. Still you got the opportunity to take her back. But you did not take her back. Idda is over. Hmm? Idda is over. Still you got this allowance to, to marry her once again. But now you have exhausted two talaq. So it means only one talaq is left with you. That is the final talaq. And this final talaq is the third talaq, about which the Allah SWT said in the very same ayah, فَإِن تَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلْبُ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ So if he gives the third talaq, that is after the two, the third one, فَإِن تَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلْبُ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِحَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَهُ Then this woman is not halal for him until she marries someone else. Now, if that someone else, if the second husband happens to divorce her, then and only then this woman can marry the first husband. In Allah. Even if the second husband has divorced her, then these two persons, the previous husband, can marry her, they both marry. Uh, they come, enter into marriage once again if they think that they are going to keep hudud Allah, hudud of Allah, the limits of Allah, and they can live happily. Now, those people who say no, we we can uh, give another talaq in the in the period, first talaq, then second talaq, and third talaq. For them, I say that. When Allah SWT said, At-talaqu marratani. Talaq is twice. Marra in Arabic, marra, what means marra? Once. Marratani, marratani, twice. So now this word marra, does it mean that if a person says talaq, talaq, talaq three times in one go, he can, he can say that I have done it three times, this is the third one. At-talaq, talaq, talaq, third one is the talaq. He said, no, the word marra, word marra is not to be understood in this way. Marra is associated with space and time as well. For example, in the end of Surah Tawbah, Allah SWT is saying about the people of Jahiliyyah. Don't we see that they are given test, fitna. They are given test, kullam in every year, marratan or marratain, either once or twice, either once or twice, summa la yatubu, even then they don't do tawba, wala hum yallakarun, they don't receive any admonition. So when Allah SWT is using the same word marra or marratain, it means that. Maybe they have uh, a test of uh, any calamity falling upon them, any disease, any famine, once, and after a few months' time, another time, that is twice. It does not mean that the first calamity is to be counted three times. No. First calamity is first one. After a few months, second comes, so it becomes twice. All right, take another example. Where three times are mentioned, uh, that is in Surah al -Nur. And this ayah is telling us that when you go to sleep in your house, then your 
children should not enter into your apartment. They have to ask permission before enter, before entry. The ayah is, Ya ayu al-ladhina aman li yasta'din kumu al-ladhina malakat aymanukum wal-ladhina lam yablughu al-huluma minkum salasa marrat salasa marrat min qabdu salat al-fajr wa hina tada'una siyadakum min al-zahira wa min ba'di salat al-isha salasu awrat lakum O believers, those people whom your right hand possess means slaves. Now leave them, leave them. They are no more available now. The second is available. And those children who did not reach the age of majority, they did not reach the age of majority, they had to ask you permission three times. Yani the whole day they can enter your house, they can enter upon you without any permission. But these three times when you go for sleep, maybe you are with your wife, so this is why they have to knock, huh? they have to take permission. And what are these three times? Min qabla salat al-fajr, before fajr prayer, because you are already there for, uh, sleeping. Wa hina tada'una siyabakum min al-zahira, and at siesta time, siesta time is after zuhur. Normally, uh, Arabia is too hot and people used to have siesta after Zohar. So after Zohar you are also, maybe with your wife and uh, separately, uh, means uh, you are uh, with her in privacy. And the third day, from the Salat al-Isha, and after Isha time when you go to bed. So you are to take permission to enter. Salasa marratin. So these salasa marratin are different, different timing. One time is in the morning, one in the siesta time, Zohar time, and one in the Isha. These three separate times, then it comes salasa marratin. So when Allah SWT said, at talaq marratan, talaq is twice, it does not mean that talaq talaq, huh? Then two talaq are counted. No. <coughs> talaq got only at one time it is counted as, as one talaq. So if you say it hundred times, you will say all ninety-nines are invalid, only one is valid. Uh, because it got uh, no impact upon, uh, upon her. Just one talaq is enough. At one time is one talaq. After this talaq, the iddah period will start. You have to count this iddah. And within this iddah period, you can do only one thing, and that is rujoo. I give another example as well, and that is, if it is Asr time, if it is Asr time, you can pray today's Asr. Today's Asr you can pray, or it is Maghrib time, you can pray Maghrib time, our Maghrib prayer for today. But if you say, let me pray for tomorrow as well, and day after tomorrow as well, it will not be acceptable. Even if you pray with the intention of uh, uh, the prayer for tomorrow and day after tomorrow, it will not be valid. You have to pray it once again. It becomes maybe not a prayer, but it is not going to suffice you from tomorrow's prayer and day after tomorrow's prayer. Because this time, this Maghrib time is only valid for one Maghrib. Not uh, for three Maghrib or four Maghrib. In the very same way, when it is the clean period of the woman, it is valid only for one talaq. So if you give many talaq, then they are not valid. <coughs> only the first one would be valid. And uh, the first one is a raj'i revocable talaq. So you can revoke this talaq and you can take your wife back within the idda period. Then she is your your. In the other example, I said that the man did not revoke uh, the talaq, so he is allowed to remarry. In this example, suppose he has revoked the talaq, she is still his wife, but one talaq is exhausted. Later, he has given the second talaq after three months' time, three years' time, thirty years' time. He has given her second talaq and he revoked it within the period. She is still his wife, but two, two talaqs are exhausted. Now he got only one talaq left, and this talaq is final. It means that he can't revoke this talaq. 
If he done this talaq, then after idba, it will become binding. There is no rujur. And as I said before, he can't remarry this woman. Only in, only in one case, if she marries someone else for the sake of marriage. Remember, not for the sake of halala. Many people, they don't understand halala. Halala, and they have taken it from our Quran. They say that uh, first of all, the person has done a, a great error, a great mistake, oh, a great blunder by saying it three times. And then somebody, uh, somebody would tell him, oh, three are three. So she is uh, no more your wife. He regrets. He said, please, the way out for me. A way out for me. They say, oh, there is a halala center, just phone them, make an appointment with someone, and he's ready. And for a few hundred pounds, he's ready to make halala for it with your wife. It means that you have to, she has to marry that man who is muhallil. Muhallil means the one who is doing halala for her. Muhallil. And with the promise that he is going to divorce her, after one day, two days, yes, he's going to divorce her. And then she has to pass the Idda period from the second husband. And after Idda period, you, Mr. Gentleman, you are allowed to marry her once again. This is called halal. This is called halal. I'm going to discuss later about uh, the saying of Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They say that he made three talaq as three. Is it not true? Yes, we have to. We have to mention this matter, but I am saying that you go to Sayyidina Umar and accept his ruling. Accept his ruling about three talaq. That there are three talaq. But you don't accept his ruling about halala. He said, Laanallahu al muhallila He quoted the hadith of the Prophet. Laanallahu al muhallila wal muhallala la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curses the person who does halala, mean the second husband. And the person for whom halala is done, mean the first husband. And Sayyidina Umar quoted this uh, hadith and said, Bring me these two persons, the first husband and the second husband, I'm going to, I'm going to stone them to death because uh, this, is the, this is the punishment for, for adultery. They are committing adultery, so I am going to stone them. So why don't they don't they take uh, this uh, ruling of Sayyidina Umar as well. They accept the first ruling, which suits them, and when it comes to the second uh, ruling about halala, they don't take it at all. This is very, it is very clear that Sayyidina Umar, he did not uh, approve this halala practice at all. So, first of all, let us uh, uh, <coughs> Make, to make it uh, very, very clear that once again, after first talaq, a person can take, a, take his wife back. After second talaq, he can take his wife back. After third talaq, he can't. That is one thing which, has, which is clear. There is another thing which is not talaq, which is called fidya. Quran in the very uh, same ayah, which is the ayah of talaq in Surah Al-Baqarah, where it is said, At-talaq marratani fa imsaakum bil ma'rufin wa fasihun bi ihsan wa la yahidu lakum an ta'akudu bimma ataytumuhunna shay'an illa an yakhafa an la yuqima hudud Allah fa in khiftum an la yuqima hudud Allah fa la junaha alayhima fi maftadat bih tilka hudud Allah fa la ta'akaduha so, this ayah, which is ayah number 229 of Surah Al-Baqarah, it begins with At-Talaq Marratani, Talaq is twice. And then the next ayah, which is 230, Fa'in talaqa, and if he gives, then after two talaq, he gives the third one as well, then this woman is not halal for him. In between, in between these two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about fidya, which is known as khula as well. Khula or khula. Hmm? What is the ayah here? 
If you give talaq to your wife, which is the first talaq or the second talaq, it is not halal for you that you take from them any amount of dowry. Because you are giving the divorce. So it is not halal for you to take from them the money which you have given them. Normally it is money. It is gold. It is gold. But in very rare cases, uh, some people nowadays, they want, to have, they, 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 they want to have a very very easy way of uh, marriage. Uh, what is your dawar amount? They would say kitab. Al-kitab. Quran. Uh, the dawar amount is of Quran. I will give him a copy of a Quran. All right, we got so many copies here. You can give hundred copies. So it is not going to cost you a lot. What is this? Just this, there should be some money she can benefit out of it. That is only, you see, in such cases where we, we always quote this hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that a woman came to the Prophet and she said that I, I present myself to you, which is called uh, Hiba. So she was presenting herself to the Prophet ﷺ means that I don't want any dowry. I just present myself to you. Marry me. The Prophet uh, at that time, he, he was not uh, looking to marry her, so he kept quiet. So when he kept quiet, a man stood up. He said, oh, Prophet, if you are not uh, willing, then let me marry her. Prophet says, yes, yes. So he said, what amount, what dowry you can give her? And the man was a poor person. He said, I got nothing. The Prophet said, Walau khataman min hadith. Have you got an iron ring? Iron ring, you see, not golden ring, not platinum, <laughs> not silver ring, just iron ring. And he said, even iron ring, I got nothing. So Prophet ﷺ kept quiet now and without giving any mahar, it is not allowed for you to marry this woman. Now this uh, man was about to retreat when the Prophet ﷺ said to him, do you, do you memorize some Quran? He said, yes, I memorized certain surah. All right, he said, come. And then he married this woman to this man on a dowry amount of this surah you are going to teach her. He said, Ankahtuka iyaha, zawwashtuka ha, bima ma'aka min al Quran. I went you to this woman for those surah which you got with you, means teach her. So this uh, hadith. Uh, means that if you don't have some material thing in dawar amount, then, only then, you can give in dawar amount anything which is related to skill, your skill, to teach her Quran, or uh, a person is saying, I will take her for Hajj, for Umrah. That is called benefit. So, you can have the benefit as dawar amount if you don't have the material money with you. This is uh, the ruling from this hadith. So don't take from them anything which you have given to them. Illa yakhafa Allah yuqima hudud Allah. Except in one case. The case is that you can't keep the limits of Allah between two of you. And uh, the matters have come to such, an, such a state such an extent that you can't live together in peace and harmony. And the woman wants to come out of this marriage. So Allah SWT said, then in that case, فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ اللَّهِ يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا فِي مَفْتَدِدْ بِهِ If you think that both of them, if they live in this marriage, they can't keep the limits of Allah, then there is nothing wrong. فِي مَفْتَدَدْ بِهِ If this woman leave something as a fidya. Fidya means that he leaves that amount of dowry to the man and give, give it back to him. These are the limits of Allah. Don't exceed them. 
وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّهُ مُدَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ And the person who exceeds the limits of Allah, they are the people who are unjust. So this, the word fidya is used here, fidya in Quran. But in hadith, the word khul'a, takhala'a, khala'a, ikhtala'a is used. And we got this uh, famous case of Sabit ibn Qais and his wife. His wife came to the Prophet wasallam, and he said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I can't live with Sabit ibn Qais. Hmm? If you take all the narrations, we come to know that Prophet wasallam said, why, what is the reason? And she said only one thing, I despise him. I hate him. I hate him. Maybe some reason for uh, this hatred, because of his appearance, hmm? or because of something else, all few things are mentioned in the Hadith. But the main thing was, I hate him. So Prophet Sallallahu called upon Sabit ibn Qais and said to the wife Fatima ibn Qais, return the dowry amount which you received from him to back to him. What was the dowry amount? She said that it was a few palm trees a garden of palm trees. Uh, like uh, any, the thing which is available to you. I have seen some of the marriages here, especially our brothers who are coming from, uh, from Somalia, for example. Dabar amount is camels. Huh? Mashallah, 100 camels are huh? 50 camels, are 25 camels. So it is a great wealth. Even one camel is a great wealth. Let alone if there are 10 or 20. So, in Arabia, they used to have palm trees, or date trees, we can say. So she received this garden of date trees, and Prophet wasallam said to her, return it to your husband. She said, yes. And then the Prophet said to Sabit ibn Qais, divorce her now. Huh? So this divorce is called khula, which is a divorce in exchange of the double amount <coughs> from the woman. So as long that is khula, which is uh, mentioned here between two talaq, a talaq maratan, and the third talaq, fa'in talaqa, so it means that it is not counted as one of the three talaq. So if a woman has done khula, you are not going to count it among the three talaqs. So a woman can, she might have done, she might have uh, uh, twice, she was divorced and the husband has taken her back. And once she has done khula, if you treat khula as the third talaq, so it means that this man can't marry her once again. But you are not going to treat this khula as the third talaq because this khula is mentioned in between talaq maratani and then find talaqa, the third talaq. That is, uh, you know, of course, this is the this is the this is the authentic understanding of this ayah. But some people will say no, it is talaq, so they will count it as talaq. So if uh, she has done twice, she has been revoked, her talaq is revoked, and once she has done kula, they will say, oh, these are three talaq. But according to this interpretation which I have given to you, kula is not considered as the third talaq in this case, and the the person can marry her if he likes. The other thing which uh, we can understand from this uh, expression that if a person has given three talaq and then he does halala, then he does halala. By halala this woman becomes halal for him? No. No, because this halala is for the intention of allowing this man to marry her. This, is, this intention is not right. So this is why if a woman does halala because of the man, so the other, the second nikah would not be halal. So nikah is tahleel batilun. This nikah is not going to be considered. Actually the man who did halala, he deserves punishment, not to, not to be married to her. So nikah al is is not uh, right. <coughs> now, remember also, 
this wording kullu talaqin raj'i in kullu talaqin raj'i illa talaq al-fidya wa talaq li ghayri al-masqulu biha wa talaq al-thalis every divorce every divorce is revocable kullu talaqin raj'i every divorce is revocable except except talaq al-fidya talaq which is talaq al-fidya means talaq al-khul'a out of khul if this talaq is given then it is not uh, that is not revocable i mean that if a woman has done khul'a then the man can't take her back so if uh, if taking back is allowed then what is going to happen the, the woman has taken the double back <laughs> and the man said i take you back now no it is not allowed so every talaq is revocable except the talaq of khula and the divorce to a woman with whom you did not uh, consummate the marriage this is called al ghair al mazqul biha the woman uh, with which you did not consummate the marriage i mean just the marriage was done and after that you divorce her then you can't take her back what talaq is thalis and in the same way if you have given three talaq then the third talaq is not revocable and we have already said only first talaq is revocable second talaq is revocable third talaq is not revocable at all so these are the few things and then let us move to and we have understood that the right way of talaq is that the person should give talaq in a clean period of the woman another thing not only clean period that period in which he got no intimate relation with her as well there are two conditions now first is it should be a clean period tohor she is in the state of tohor not hayat huh? second that if it is a period of tohor or cleanliness of but still he got intimate relation with her husband and wife relation with her then he should not divorce her he should not divorce her so if he divorces her then this is against the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if such a woman comes to us or such a couple comes to us asking whether this talaq is valid or not we would say it is not valid so if this talaq was done during the menses period not valid if the talaq is done in a clean period during which she got intimate relation with her it is not valid and we have the hadith of abdullah ibn umar here abdullah ibn umar the son of umar he divorced his wife while she was on her menses so what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said to said now but ask your son more ask the, your son to take her back to take her back and let her wait until she is free from the menses now she is clean now she is clean after the first menses but still the prophet said no let her wait until the whole clean period comes to an end then she got another menses and then she becomes clean this is the time if he wants to divorce her then he can divorce her so this is a very clear case that said now uh said na abdullah ibn umar did divorce his wife in in her menses and prophet asked him to take her back it does not mean to revoke revoking means that he is adding to his suffering that you have done one thing a talaq take her back so one talaq is finished that that is going to add to the suffering of the woman so he has the word murhu fal yurajihu this is muraja means to just return it to your house take it back to your house it does not mean revoking the talaq that is uh, to be understood and the second thing is here is now we come to the issue of three talaq the person who says three talaq 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 what is the answer to that did it happen during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are two cases which are mentioned in hadith one case is the that of ukana 
bin Abdi Yazid from the tribe of Bani al Muttalib. Rukana divorced his wife in this way. Talaq, talaq, talaq. And the matter was reported to the Prophet. And the Prophet became so angry, so angry, that he used these words Ayyul Abu bi Kitabillah wa ana baina azkurikum. People are making fun with the book of Allah, and I'm still among you. So he said about this uh, practice that they are playing with the book of Allah. Because the book of Allah does not say that you say it three times. It says, Ya Ayyul Nabi, Iza Tadakum Nisa, Fatatakum Nari Aitatin. It speaks about from the first talaq, in Surah Al-Talaq. And then he asked Rukana to take her back. Because these three talaq are not counted as three, but they were counted as one talaq. So he asked him to take her back. There is another hadith of Mahmud ibn Labid in which uh, the man's name is not mentioned, but it is uh, only mentioned that he gave three talaq and Prophet ﷺ did not consider it as three talaq, but considered it them only one talaq. Now here comes very, very clear hadith that uh, what happened during the time of Sayyidina Umar when he said, according to one of his ruling, that if a person is found to be giving three talaq, I will make it three. So it means the wife would be haram upon him forever. Hadith of Ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas, as you know, that is one of the prominent Sahaba in the understanding of uh, the deen. Even the Prophet ﷺ made dua for him, Allahumma faqqihu fi deen. Allahumma faqqihu fi deen. Oh Allah, give him fiqh, the understanding of deen. His pupil is Abu Sahaba. Abu Sahaba is asking him this question to Abdullah ibn Abbas, please tell us, how was three talaq being considered during the time of the Prophet, during the time of Abu Bakr, and during the early time of yours, how the three talaq were considered? Was they considered one or not? And he said, yes, they were considered as one talaq. Then what happened? Then Sayyidina Umar, during his time, as you know that during his time there were a lot of conquests of different lands. Persian Empire was conquered, Roman Empire was conquered. So the people, the simple people who are living in Medina and Makkah, they are exposed to all these women in Roman Empire, Roman areas. Roman areas were all, was all that Palestine, Syria, Egypt, that was all Roman areas. Persian, all Persian area, which is, uh, in those days it was Iraq, and after Iraq it was now present day Iran, which, is, which was known to be Faris. So what happened when these people were exposed to the women there? They started marrying there, because they are allowed to marry more than one wife. Hmm? One, two, three, four, not more than four. But anyhow, the poor lady in Al-Madina, the first wife, is not happy with that marriage. She's not married. So sometime, it may be very rare cases, sometime, just to please uh, the first wife, the man will say to the first wife, don't worry, I'm going to divorce her. Hmm? All right, I am divorced. Talaq, talaq, talaq. Now the poor lady thinks that the other woman is fired now completely because he has said three times. But the man is very clever, he knows that three times only once. Huh? So she is uh, pleased that this man has uh, divorced the second wife, but the man, within three months' time, he would say to her, I'll take you back, because this three talaq are only one talaq. So Sayyidina Umar knew that these people are doing this hila. Hila means a device to make something which is uh, haram, halal. That is, that is hila. Here comes the executive order of a caliph. Sayyidina Umar, as a caliph, he gave this executive ruling, all right, if you do it, I will make it binding. 
Only when he saw the people, they are misusing the concept of talaq, he made it binding. As a caliph, as a caliph, he could do that. Yes, because what he is doing here, you can say, did it do something very, very bad? Or uh, something which was haram, he made it halal? No. A man got the right to divorce three times, not so. So if he uses these three talaq at one time, at one time, it are, they are going to be considered as one. But Sayyidina Omar said, all right, you are allowed to give it three times and you exhausted it, I will make it three. So he is curtailing the right of that man only. The right of the man to, to make it second time, to make it third time, at a separate time, he is just curtailing that right. Just to, just to deter them from this practice. So Sayyidina Umar, as I said to you earlier, that when people started doing it and then they are starting doing halala, he said, bring me the person who does this halala and the person for whom this halala is done and I am going to punish them, give them the punishment of hadith, punishment of stoning to death, which is the punishment of sin. And then there is another statement which is attributed to Sayyidina Umar and that is found in Musnad al-Ismaili. Musnad al-Ismaili is not available but because in earlier time it was available so this is why when Ibn al-Qayyim, the great scholar of Islam, he mentioned it that he must have read it in Musnad al-Ismaili and then he said that Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Umar before his death he said that I regretted three things which I have done. I regretted three things which I have done and one of them is to declare three talaq as three talaq. He regretted it. Why did I do that? I should not have done it. So, now what should be our, uh, our stand? We know that Sayyidina Umar, as a caliph, he got the right to issue such an executive order. Another example is that the year 17 of Hijra, there was a great famine in Al Madina. Great famine. Not only in Madina, Makkah, Madina, everywhere. And because of famine, Sayyidina Umar said, I suspend the punishment of the thief, cutting the hand of the thief. Why? He said, People are stealing because of hunger. And as a caliph, my duty is to provide them food. I am not able to provide them food, so why should I cut their hand if they steal? So the suspension of this punishment doesn't mean that he has abrogated the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, it is a suspension. And once the famine was over, this punishment came back. So in the very same way, we would say that there were such circumstances during the time of Sayyidina Umar that he thought to order or to issue that order of making three talaq as three, binding upon the man. But later, there were not the same conditions. So this is why Imam Yatamiya, he is uh, the one who has raised this issue in a, with the great force during his time. He died in 728 of Hijra. 728 of if you want to convert it to uh, the uh, to the Christian calendar, approximately just add six hundred years, six hundred years, because uh, the Prophet came five hundred seventy years after Isa So add six hundred years, so you will find out seven hundred twenty-eight is uh, very near to fourteenth century. Thirteen twenty-eight means fourteenth century. So Sayyidina uh, Imam Nathamiya raised this issue that three talaqs are to be considered as one talaq. Many jurists of his time he became deadly against him and this is why he has to suffer a lot. He was imprisoned and buried because of this issue. But nowadays people realize that people don't understand the true way of talaq. Out of anger they say talaq, talaq, talaq. Later, the next day they say, oh, we have to reconcile. 
They go to their sheikh, the sheikh says, no, there is no way of reconciliation until she marries someone for halal. Astaghfirullah. He has done a, 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 a great mistake, as I said in the beginning, a blunder, and you want to, to commit another blunder, which is more than that, and you are asking the woman to, to go to a foreign person and to marry him just for the sake of halal. So this is why we would say that uh, this ruling is now accepted by so many Muslim countries. At least 13 Muslim countries, they got uh, among uh, their constitution, among their laws, that three talaqs are to be counted as one talaq. First of all, that was the ruling in Egypt in, uh, in uh, 1929. And then it uh, was accepted by Syria, then by Jordan, then by Iraq, then by Morocco, Sudan, and in present time Pakistan as well. Maybe some more countries as well, because this is the situation. People are totally ignorant of the, of the way of talaq. So when they do it out of ignorance, then we say, Three talaqs are not three talaqs, they are only one talaq and which is revocable. So as long as you are within in that period, you take her back. And if the in that period has come to an end, marry her, marry her once again. If now, if she likes, if she agrees, if she does not agree, then if this is the step you have taken, so you have to regret yourself. You have to regret by yourself. Now, so this was the reality about uh, the, the, the three talaq. Now, now can, can we take some few, few other ways of talaq which people normally do? Conditional talaq. If you, someone is saying to, to his wife, if you meet your uncle, uh, if you go to your uncle's house, you are divorced. That is called conditional talaq. Uh, he wants to confine her to the four walls of the house and he says that if you step one, if you take one step out of this house, huh, you are talaq, you are divorced. So this is called conditional talaq. There is one thing, uh, one opinion, which uh, I would say that opinion is a very good opinion, that this type of conditional talaq is not valid at all because this is not according to the Sunnah. Anything which is not Sunnah, any person who does anything which is not in accordance to our deen, our Prophet is saying, which is mardud, it is to be rejected. So because there is nothing like conditional talaq in Sunnah, so it should not be, it should not be valid at all. But there is another interpretation and uh, it, it, is, it, is, it has also come from Imam Al-Tamiyyah, Imam Al-Qayyim. Nowadays even Imam Sheikh Ibn Abbas, they have given the very same fatwa and ruling. That this type of conditional talaq, you have to ask the person what was your niya, what was your intention. If your intention was really to give her talaq, that was the intention then the talaq is going to be counted. And that is a, the one revocable talaq. But if your intention was just to discipline her, because uh, you don't want her to go to her uncle's house. So this is why I said, if you go there, you would be divorced. But actually he did not want to divorce her, he just wanted to deter her, to discipline her. If that is the niya, then this type of condition talaq is counted as one swearing one swearing of qasam, which is to be counted as one, as qasam. And, and you, you know the kafara of qasam, that if you have uh, done a qasam oath, that by Allah, I'm not going to do this thing, uh, and then you have done it, then you have to pay just kafara, and everything would be all right for you. And what is the kafara expiation? The expiation, uh, expiation is the first thing which is not available to set a slave free. Uh, to set a slave free, it is not available. But the second thing is available. Second thing is fasting for, for three days. That is available, fasting for three days. Or even if you can't fast, then feeding ten masaki, ten poor person. Or clothe them, give them clothes. Uh, 
for uh, Tel Musak. So as long as you do kafara, you give kafara, expiation, then you come out of this condition Allah. And your marriage is saved. So this is why when uh, people come with conditions that are in our Sharia Council, we ask them, what was your intention? Hmm? And the person is clever, he knows that if I say, oh, my intention was talaq, then he will, she will say, yes, she is divorced, yeah. she is divorced. So he would say, no, no, I, I did not want talaq, I just wanted to discipline her, to deter her, to frighten her. So we will say, we treat it as, as hasan. Just give this expiation. We have already said about uh, the divorce in the menses. Divorce in the menses, that is also not considered. Divorce in a clean period where the person got intimate relation with his wife, not considered. There is another misconception with the people that if a person has divorced his wife while she was pregnant, they say, oh, it, it did not happen. No, that is wrong. Divorce can happen. If the woman was pregnant and you divorce her, but that divorce is just revocable divorce. The only thing is that her idda period is not three months. It's not three months because she, is, she got two months. Her idda is until she gives birth to the child. Suppose you have given this divorce in the beginning of her pregnancy, so it means that her idda is for nine months. Because until she gives birth, so the idda is prolonged. On the other hand, she is about to give birth uh, within two days, after two days now. And you gave her divorce now, before two days of her giving birth to the child. Then it means her idda is only two days. After two days, she has given birth to the child, idda is over. And in idda, you are allowed to take her back. So if he has taken her back, then the matter is over. And the matter is, uh, you know, she is still your wife. But if you did not take her back, then talaq becomes binding. So you are allowed to, you know, talaq is valid in pregnancy. And after that, uh, another issue, Talaq in extreme anger. Talaq in extreme anger. Not in normal anger. There is a difference between the normal anger and extreme anger. Of course, a person is going to divorce his wife when he is angry. Nobody is going to divorce his wife when he is very pleased with her and saying to her, darling, uh, such a nice day, let me give you a present, I divorce you. Uh, that is not going to happen. There must be some anger. So normal anger is always there. But if it is an extreme anger, that person does not know what he is speaking, or he was motivated to do this because of uh, the woman made him so angry because of any tiny reason, in that way, in that situation, we apply this hadith, لا طلاقة ولا إطاقة في إغلاق That is narrated by Abu Dawud in Sunan Abu Dawud لا طلاقة لا طلاقة ولا إطاقة في إغلاق No طلاق is valid No freeing the slave is valid And if you got slaves then you free them في إغلاق In the state of إغلاق What is the state of إغلاق? Iglaq is uh, Arabic word, aglaqa means to shut. If you shut the door, you say aglaq al -ba. So iglaq means that your state of mind is said that because of anger or because of intoxication or because of any other reason, your mind is totally shut. It's totally shut and you can't think properly. So if a person is so angry that he said talaq while his mind was not good, it was uh, totally uh, uh, just like uh, it had been shut, then this talaq is not going to be counted. So this is another uh, ruling which uh, gives relief to so many people who comes and uh, they say that we have given talaq in a state of, of anger. So 
this is uh, this is another issue which uh, uh, I wanted to uh, to address here, which we have already said. Talaq of na talaq wa la itaqa fi irlaqi. Some people they would say uh, they would say that uh, we follow Hanafi Madhab, Shafi Madhab, for example, and in our Madhab, uh, three talaq are three. So what is the answer to that? The best answer is that we have to follow the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet And this is what all these four Imams have said. Imam Hanifa said very clearly, is a sahal hadith of our Madhab. If hadith is found to be sound, authentic, then this is my way. Don't ask about my opinion, follow the hadith of the Prophet Imam Shafi said similar things. Imam Malik said similar things. Imam Ahmad said similar things. I'm not here, here to quote all their saying, but all of them they said, follow the Sunnah, not my say. Imam Malik uh, when he even said that, if my saying goes against the Sunnah of the Prophet, then throw it, throw it beyond the wall. The second thing is that even among Hanafi scholars, there is a great scholar in India, everybody knows his name, Maulana Ashraf Farizhani. Among Hanafiya, there was a very delicate issue of such a husband, such a person who went away and then he became untraceable. In Arabic, it is called mafkud. The person is now no more traceable. How long the woman is going to wait for such a person? How long? According to the mazhab, they say that until, until this man reaches a natural, a natural period of life. Normally, they say, and normally we can say 80 years time. So if the person has disappeared at the age of 20, you are going to say to this woman, wait for another 60 years. After 60 years, after 60 years, then you will say, all right, now you are divorced. Who is going to marry this woman after 60 years? It's a great suffering. So this great Imam, Mawana Ashraf al Thani, he wrote a book about this about this issue and some more similar issue al hilatun najiza lil halilatil ajiza lil halilatil ajiza it is the woman who is stuck there is a hila for her there is a hila there is a way out for her and he says in this issue the way out is let us take the opinion of maliki imam malik yani now we can leave our mother and we can take the mother of imam malik in this issue and what is the mother of Imam Malik? He says that go to the decision made, made by Sayyidina Umar in such a case. Sayyidina Umar said, for such a woman, she has to wait only for four years. Just for four years. After four years, if, she, if he does not come, the man does not come back, then the Qadi is going to declare this nikah as finished. And she is allowed to marry someone else. That is another issue, that she has married someone else, now the first husband comes back. What to do now? Then this woman is given a choice. The choice is for the woman. If you want to go back to the first husband, then the second husband has to divorce her. And if he wants to remain with the second husband, then the first husband has to say the word of divorce to her. This is, uh, this is another issue, but anyhow, to make it easy for the people, Mawlana Ashraf Ali Thani, he said that let us take the mazhab of Malikiya here. We could have already, we could have said very simply that let us go to the ruling of Khulafah al Rashidin because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnatil Khulafah al Rashidin al Mahdiyin min Badi. Take the sunnah, my sunnah, and the sunnah of my khulafa, the guided one who will come after me. 
So as long as we got the sunnah of Sayyidina Umar, why uh, you are looking for Madhav Malikiya or Madhav Shafi'iya? No. Go back straight to, to the practice of uh, one of the Kulafa. These are the few things uh, uh, which I wanted to, to mention here. And uh, in the end, uh, let me let me say something to amuse you. Uh, this is not uh, this is not something on the lines of Sharia, but it is just uh, an incident which happened during the time of Abbasi. That Abbasi Caliph, maybe Mamun or uh, yes, Mamun, during his time, this happened. That in his court, someone said that last night something strange has happened. Very strange has happened. He said, what happened? He said, a man has divorced five women in one night. He said, how it could be possible? Because you can't have uh, more than four wives. So how could he divorce five wives? We can't understand that. Explain. So he explained that this man, actually he got four wives. He came back. The food was not cooked. He became very angry to his first wife. Uh, to his uh, uh, to his uh, fourth wife, and because she didn't cook the food at right time, he said, "I divorce you." So she was divorced. Now the third wife stood up, and she said to him, "Man, what type of man you are? You have just divorced your wife because of this tiny reason." And he said, "You dare to speak to me? You are divorced." So he divorced her. Now the second wife stood up and he thought, man, you are, uh, you are not behaving well. You divorced two women, two women at one, in one night. What are you doing? He said the same word. You dare to speak to me in this way? You are divorced. So he, he divorced three wives. Now the first one, which was the oldest one and which has lived for maybe for uh, 30 years with him or 40 years, she thought that he is not going to divorce her. So she stood up and she said, man, you are doing wrong. You are divorcing your wife in this way. So when she said these words, he said, you are divorced as well. So he divorced all four wives. What happened? Because houses were very close to each other. The next door neighbor wife was listening to all what is happening in this house. So she shouted from her house beyond the wall, man, ittaqillah, fear Allah, fear Allah, and don't divorce your wives in this way. And this man shouted, if your husband agrees, you are divorced as well. <laughs> huh? If your husband agrees, you are divorced as well. And the husband was listening. He said, I agree, I agree. <laughs> so the fifth one is divorced as well. So that is, as I said to you, that how people used to misuse this institution of talaq. But alhamdulillah, we, we know that what is the right way of talaq and we have to stick to it. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khairan. Now, what was your question? Uh, 